Homework number 407, part 1, we will cover simplifying radicals, the quadratic formula, and finding average rate of change from a table. So let's take a look at simplifying radicals. So when you simplify a radical, you are looking to rename it as the product of two factors instead of just the number 32. And what you want to use are the perfect square factors. So here I have the first 15. And 32, if you take half of that, it's about 15, then you would be trying to divide 32 by any of these perfect red square numbers that are below half of it. So 9, 4, not 1, because then you would just have 32 and 1. So when I go back here, I'm going to open my calculator, and I'm going to try 32 um, divided by 16, and I get 2. So that means that the number 32 can be rewritten as the product of 16 times 2. And that giant square root sign can be split into the product of two separate square root signs, which does allow me to actually take the square root of 16. So that is how you simplify a radical. You find two numbers that multiply to give you the radicand, but one of those two numbers should be a perfect square. So four square roots of two. Let's type that in here. And let's try one more. This is acting funny. Here we go. Square root of 24. Again, you're looking at your perfect square list, and you want to start about halfway. So halfway would be 12, so anything 9, 4. 9 or 4. So uh, 20. I know this doesn't work, but you can still try it out. 24 divided by 9. See how that's a decimal? It's not a perfect integer. So then we'll try 24 divided by 4. And we get 6. So now we have our two factors. So square root of 24 can be rewritten as the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. Square root of 4 is perfect. Square root of 6 is not. So 2 square roots of 6 is my final answer. You type that in. Use the square root button down here. And then you're all set. Let's take a look at the second topic, the quadratic formula. So you first need to know your quadratic formula. You can look it up on a reference sheet if you don't remember it. But it is negative b plus or minus, my pen is not working. <laughs> negative b plus or minus, what is wrong with it? The square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Uh, your sentence does need to be in standard form before you can start. So you have to have a zero on one side, so move that minus 6w squared over. You get 1w squared plus 9w plus 1 equals 0. So now I know my a, b, and c values. So negative 9 plus or minus oops, square root of 9 squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now this does say in simplest form, so you do not want to put this entire fraction in your calculator. You simply want to put what's under the radical sign, that's called the discriminant. You simply want to put that into your calculator to see if uh, you can simplify that radical. So 4 times 1 times 1, I don't even need to write it um, because it's still going to be a 4. Oops, excuse me. but you would typically type exactly what you see, just like that. All right, so negative 9, get my pen ready, negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 77 all over 2. Now, I know that 77 only has factors of 7 and 11, and neither one of those is a perfect square. So I'm going to write this entire fraction as my answer. So I'm going to write 9 in a fraction bar first. And then I'll go back and put in my negative sign, my plus or minus sign, my square root of 77. And because I put that fraction right away, I'll get the 2 to go underneath everything. So that's important when you want to type that fraction. Why is this not giving me that check mark? I know it's right. <laughs> There's something wrong with Delta Math today. Every time I go to work, it won't show me the final answer. And if I refresh, it's going to give me a new question. Um, but that is how you solve the quadratic formula by simplest form. Okay, let's take a look at finding average rate of change from a table. The average rate of change is delta y divided by delta x, the change in y over the change in x. 
and they need to tell you between which two values you're going to look. So go to your table and find x is 5 and x is 6, and these are the two values you're going to use. So the change in y is 81 minus 27, and the change in x is 6 minus 5. You can choose to do it piece by piece, or you can type the whole fraction in your calculator like this by pressing alpha y equals and typing 81 minus 27, and then arrowing down, typing 6 minus 5, which we know is going to be a 1, uh, but 54 over 1 is your answer. So you're going to type 54 over 1, which is the same as 54, and submit. All right, we'll do this one more time. So again, find your x values that they're looking for, and that is 4 and 28. So these are your two points that you'll put into your fraction. So 32 minus 44, all over 28 minus 4. I'm going to choose to put this in my calculator all at once, right here. So alpha y equals, and 32 minus 44, and 28 minus 4, and negative 1 half. I'll type that here, negative 1 half. And that's it.